Good morning, YouTubers. So I'm out here at an undisclosed location, basically <laughs> next to an industrial park. And I thought, well, it's been a while. I've been moving stuff, getting resituated, and why not do a pretty easy but fact-filled video on wire welding, MIG welding in particular, so short art MIG. So what we're gonna do today is testing with cut and etch to see how voltage affects penetration. If it does, how much? We don't know unless we test, right? So let's get into it. So here's the deal. I wanted to do this video with 035 hardwire MIG, which is what you should be using when really welding on quarter inch plate like this. Guess what? <laughs> the welder I have doesn't have 035 drive rolls and I don't have 035 contact tips, so I have no choice but to do this test with 030 wire. Running 035 wire gives a higher current handling capability, so the results may be slightly different with 035 wire, but for just a straight bead on plate, I know we can get a pretty decent looking bead with 030, so that's just what we're working on. I ordered the other stuff, it's gonna be like at least a week before I get it, and I think we can learn a lot with the setup we have. Now, I will be doing the beads on quarter inch plate, on this plate, this is just gonna be to dial things in to see if we can't make decent looking welds. I will be running on a generator today. Reason is there's no power where I'm at and I don't really have any other option at this point. So either I shoot a video on a generator or I don't shoot a video. I think it's better to shoot the video. So let me go get that thing fired up and we'll go from there. All right, so I just did two welds here, one at 320 inch per minute, 19.5 volts, and then one at 320 and 20 volts. I like the look of this one a little bit better. We're gonna keep the wire feed the same, and we're basically gonna run a single weld on this test plate right here at 320 inch per minute. 20 volts and then we are going to go up and down by about a half volt and we're only going to be changing voltage and then we're going to cut and etch this to see what effect the voltage has on penetration. All right, let's do a little quick recap here. 
Now, I kind of had an issue here. My MIG nozzle touched the weld pool, kind of stuck a little bit. Same thing here. Come to find out that the cord that hooks up for the gun was a little bit loose, and I think that was contributing, but whatever. Um, that's my bad. So I actually reran this one right here. And this was far enough out of the area that we're going to cut and etch to where I just will ignore it. Overall, the settings you can see, so very consistent wire feed, all the same, 320 inches per minute, but varying voltages. So this up here was 20 uh, volts, and then all the way down to here, got up to 22, and then restarted at lower values and went down to 17 and a half. And, I burn myself there. You can see, and I'll zoom in for you. You can see a drastic change in the width of the beads. Like this is a, about what I'd be aiming for. Wider, 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 flatter, flatter. I mean, this isn't a bad looking bead. And then as soon as we stepped it down from the 22 to 19 and a half, look at the stark difference in height. It just doesn't flatten out and wet out at lower voltages and then progressively lower more humped up cold toes etc if you were to weld an actual fillet weld with this you would have issues with it no doubt you would have very poor fusion these here are better the other thing that you might want to look at is as the voltage increased you can see the spatter did as well now every one of these i cooled the plate between the passes so they had a consistent temperature, but you can see like some spatter here, more. When you start to get into the higher voltages, it basically, the sp spatter increased. Now when you go down to here, there's virtually none. Much cleaner looking, but obviously, you know, a cold bead is a cold bead. And like I said earlier, 030 wire really doesn't carry the amperage necessary to be welding this at values for short circuit MIG. Spray arc, sure, different, different ball game, but you're also using different shielding gas, different, completely different values. But in the short circuit process, if you're welding quarter inch, you should really be using 035 wire. And I have a feeling that would actually help with the spatter. You would end up getting more or less flatter welds without the spatter. But again, for testing purposes, I think this will work. So what I'm gonna do now is cut this plate in half and we're gonna etch it and we're gonna see what the hell is inside and see if we can't learn anything. All right, if the proof is in the pudding, here is the pudding. Let's take a look at it. So take a look over this. You're gonna notice a couple things. As the voltage increases, the weld doesn't really penetrate more. And that's not too surprising. Now, this picture kind of makes it look like the difference in penetration might be more than it is. But in person, I mean, literally, they're the same. It's probably just the angle the plate is. And you can see that there's more metal as you lower the voltage going from left to right. Now, I have a possible and likely reason for that. Basically, when I MIG weld, and this should be the case for you as well, I pull the trigger and I wait for the molten pool to establish the size that I want, and then I get moving. If you look at the 21 through 22 volt, they're about as wide as like that 21 and 20 and a half and, and such. So I basically pulled the trigger, the puddle was the width I wanted, and then I got moving. Now, for the 20 volt and the lower voltage to get the puddle to the width that I want, I had to sit there a little bit longer, so my travel speed slowed down, thus the height of the bead change, because remember, I didn't change the wire feed speed for any of these. So you're going to run into an issue, like if you're running high voltage, you're likely to deposit a smaller weld, simply because if you sat there, you'd probably overheat the plate and just cause the molten puddle to start throwing buckshot and stuff out as you keep feeding wire into it. So that's something to note. And that's part of the reason why wire feed speed and voltage are related. At 22 volt, you can weld with those settings, but to get a proper width or height weld, you're gonna have to add more wire so that it counteracts 
the effect that you have where you're producing a wide weld with no reinforcement. And with MIG welding for short, short circuit and even flex core wire, your voltage and your amperage have to coincide with one another. Like there's a, an ideal ratio. And if it's off, you're going to produce very wide, very minimal reinforcement welds like you see that 22 volt is. All right, let's take a look at the lower voltage. This picture does a lot better job of showing how equal the penetration is. As we change the voltage up and down, the penetration stayed the same, but this shows that, I mean, between 19 and a half, 17 and a half, they're very, very similar. I mean, some of them like that 18 and a half, I don't like the look of that too much where it's kind of just sitting on the plate other than the middle, but honestly, that's just probably the spot of the plate I cut that it was like that. It, it will vary a little bit. Welding isn't perfect if you understand what I'm saying. But yeah, based on what I see here, there's a subtle difference where at 19 and a half, 19 in that ballpark, you see where the width of the bead, the height of the bead, and then as you go down in voltage, you can see a subtle difference where the bead necks up so it narrows and then the height gets higher. Because again, we were putting the same amount of wire in there. It's just that it wasn't, you know, flattening out as much. It was rising in height, but the penetration stayed the same. Now, had I done this on actual fillet welds, I have a feeling you would see some very undesirable results at 17 and a half and even lower on quarter inch plate because what would end up happening is the weld would just sit on the plate and there'd be no penetration. All right, let's look at a comparison directly between the two at the same time. So this really shows a stark difference. Now, these aren't perfectly to scale, so the higher voltage ones have more penetration than what they look like. I'm telling you in person, they're basically identical. But you can see the penetration at higher voltage. It kind of rounds the bottom of the weld, which would be more ideal, versus the lower voltage kind of just does a little V right in the center and then nothing on the edges. So based on what I see here, I would say the somewhere around 18 and a half, 19 up to like 20 or so volts would be ideal. And I was welding with C25 gas, so 75% argon, 25% CO2. If you were running pure CO2, you could actually run uh, higher voltage and that 21, 21 and a half, 22 volts in that ballpark would actually be a little bit better with, with just straight CO2 over the gas I was using. But yeah, I mean, again, based on what I'm seeing here, I would say that the penetration profile really doesn't change that much with voltage. And I kind of figured it would. It mainly just changes in width on the overall bead, but not in depth. So that's interesting and it's worth remembering that because if you just turn up the weld and think you're getting more penetration, you might not be. And really penetration, I think, is a function of both wire feed speed and voltage, not just one or the other. Very much the results I kind of anticipated. I mean, the short circuit MIG process isn't really known for deep penetration anyways, so I didn't expect a huge difference. And honestly, with the wire I was running, had I ran even more or less voltage, I don't think it would have made much of a difference. The wire would have just blown apart or it would have just sat on the plate like caulk. So not really a huge difference there. And for the next video, we're going to stay with one voltage and we're going to screw with the wire speed and see how that affects the penetration, if at all. I think it's going to do very similar things to what you saw with this, but we won't know unless we test it. So anyways, thanks for sticking around for the video. Until next time.